Hey everybody, um, in this video I'm just going to demonstrate how to make the connectors for the Shure uh, automatic microphone mixer. Um, the model that I have is the SCM810. Um, and you'll see, you probably won't see the whole thing, you'll see it's got all these uh, what, what are called Euro block connectors um, for the inputs. Um, so, in order to access those, um, you've got to make some adapters. Um, so, you'll see here, this is an example of one of the adapters that I've made. Um, I'm going from an uh, audio interface, um, so I'm just using this TRS style plug. Um, it's important that it's a three-line um, uh, three connector, so either uh, you know, a TRS quarter inch jack or um, an XLR plug. Uh, this method would work for either one. So, uh, yeah, and then on the other side, you can see this is um, what's called a Euro block connector. Sometimes they're called a Phoenix uh, connector as well. Um, there's a lot of, I guess, variation in these. They can look all the same from DigiKey, um, but I will put um, on the screen, uh, the model, the specific one that you need to buy from DigiKey, and I'll link it in the description. Um, so anyway, uh, those go into the back of the Shure and Telemix into these things here, but you have to wire them so that there's the, the plus, the minus, and the ground. Um, so yeah, let's just get started on making a, a duplicate. So uh, what I did is I have these mono price uh, patch cables here um, and they're already the plug part of it has already been pre-wired. So um, that just saves me time and I just have some of these laying around. You could make your own, but in this case, I'm just reusing something I already have. So um, yeah, so this is one that I've already uh, cut in half. Just gonna secure this on here. You can see I've already cut this one in half, um, and you can see here. Here's just the the raw end of the cable. Um, so what we need to do is open this up uh, and get the three connectors out of it. Um, I find that the best way to do this is just to kind of first make a use some wire nippers about a. I don't know, three quarters of an inch down on the cable and just kind of go around and start to make a, a ring of cuts around it. And uh, these particular cables are pretty thick. So I just kind of try my best to get in past the rubber without nicking any of the wires on the inside and you can kind of work it with your hands sometimes the cuts don't line up so you just got to go in there and then uh, what I did after that is just going in from the top oh, show it to you just kind of get into the cable jacket. And I'm sure there's, you know, specific tools for this, but you can see I'm kind of just pulling it open and you can see that there's the, the cable down underneath. So I'm just going to pull this jacket the rest of the way off. And you can see how successful because none of these wires are like coming off or falling off with the jacket. So I'm just going to clip the rubber the rest of the way off so I can just, this little bit, I can just get rid of this. Um, and I'm just going to clean up some of the extra rubber in there. Real gently. Hopefully without cutting any of the 
the shield wire. So this part that's on the outside is called the shield or the ground. Um, so uh, in this case, with this cable, I know that the, the white one uh, corresponds to the positive. Uh, the black corresponds to the negative or the middle. And then the ground is the this um, shield wire, which is the center part. The tip is the positive, which is the clear, the clear wire. And I'll show you um, in just a second how you figure that out. Because every cable, the wiring, which is positive, which is negative, and which is ground may not be clear. So um, in my case, what I'm going to do is just kind of pull this shielding kind of around the two other wires as gently and as neatly as I can and I'm just going to bind them together like so so that they are uh, ready to plug into the um, into the Eurojack connector um, and then I have these two other wires here um, so I'm just going to use this is just a wire uh, stripper you could use something like this, but it just makes it way 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 harder So it's good to, to tr try and use one of these wire strippers if you have one um, And I figured out that it's the third um, the the third uh, one on here for these cables the third little set of teeth but you just have to kind of experiment with the ones with the wire strippers that you have and I try and get sort of as far down. I kind of leave maybe just a little bit. Because that would be like a centimeter, like, a, I don't know, 10 millimeters or something. A small amount there at the bottom. And I just squeeze, pull off, just get a nice, long, clean um, set of conductors there. I'll do the same thing here. So it's harder to do when you're trying to show somebody, but yeah, go there, pull it off. And so, yeah, now you have your three, your three conductors here. Cool. So the way that you, uh, should check, um, to see if, um, uh, which is which on your uh, on your cable? So you're going to use a little multimeter here. So this is just a cheap one that I got at Harbor Freight, um, and uh, you're going to turn it on to this continuity mode. Um, yeah, uh, this one's cheap and doesn't make a sound, but nicer multimeters will have one where it'll make a sound when there's a connection. But anyway, on mine it just shows. Uh, you know, one when there's uh, infinite amount of resistance between the two prongs. Um, so I'm just going to get my two probes. I'm going to put one probe on the on this shield, and then I go over to here and I uh, touch the shield part. You can see that the resistance goes down to almost zero. Here, can I stand this up? Yeah. So you can see the resistance goes down to almost zero. So that shows that this uh, drain, this shield is is uh, correctly mapped to this part. Whereas if I tap the other ones, it just stays at one. So that means that the shield is the ground or the drain. And then if I stay up for me, there we go. Um, so then this black one, oops, let's see if I can get a good connection. Yep, that's the sleeve. Oh, I guess that's the ring. Um, so you can see that that's, oops, I can get a good connection there. Yeah, I mean, that's just about it. And then the last one is the is the tip. So anyway, that's how you uh, use your multimeter um, 
to determine, you know, how these map around um, to each uh, to each plug, uh, each of the layers of this TRS plug. Um, and that is important because if we look at the Intellimix here, um, you can see it says plus, minus, and ground for each one. So it's important that you uh, know which are which so you can wire it up right. So anyway, we've got uh, our three prongs here, hopefully. And now before you move forward, um, what you want to do is put some heat shrink um, on the cable itself. Um, just it, you can't do it after this is screwed on or you'd have to remove it and put the heat shrink on afterwards. So um, this is just going to allow you to have a nice clean cable and prevent accidental shorts and stuff like that. So I'm just going to put that right on here and it's just going to live down here on the bottom of the cable until later. Um, then we'll use a heat gun to shrink it. So um, yeah, now we have uh, one of these Euroblock connectors. If you're looking for this one that fits perfect, um, I will put it on, uh, on the model number on screen and I will put it a link to it in the uh, video description um, because yeah they vary and you want to make sure you're getting the one that actually fits um, into the SCM 810 um, so anyway uh, with these ones uh, if we have the screws up um, we want our tip uh, which is the in this case is the transparent looking shield uh, to be the farthest on the left, then the uh, ring to be the center one, um, which is the negative, and then we want our sleeve, which is the ground, um, to be in the far right plug. And it's also important to make sure that um, there isn't a little stray copper wire that is trying to oops that is trying to go in and touch everything else and cause a problem so I'm just twisting these oops together so there's no oops hard to do it well at this angle yeah it isn't gonna go and short something out Okay, cool. So then what I'm going to do is just grab my little uh, Eurojack and make sure you don't have it flipped. You want to make sure that it is uh, it is screws up because that's the way that it plugs into the back. Um, so, yeah. So I'm just going to kind of stick these in here and make sure there's no random stray wires. Whoops slightly shaky hands unfortunately yeah so then looks like it's solidly into all three ports and you probably can't see much because my hands big but yeah so it's in those ports and I'll just use a screwdriver kind of help some of those cables go in so there's plenty of it to bite down on and then um, at this point, I just stick the screwdriver into the top screws. And uh, once you get one in, it kind of helps stabilize the whole thing. And you can watch in the old port, basically the bottom The bottom of that little hole. I wonder if you can see that, but the bottom of the hole kind of raises up and uh, squishes the copper leads into the hole and just makes a nice tight fit. You can do that for the last one here. So 
Let's do it until it's nice and tight. Don't need to go crazy. And there we go. You can just kind of check and make sure there's nothing going to cause issues. Cool. So now you've uh, basically secured that, and that's this is how all Euro blocks work. At least my understanding of it is you just stick them in, and you screw it. Yeah, you screw them down into the terminals. Um, cool. Now this is where it's uh, it's good that we have um, our heat shrink because we're just going to go here. Just kind of press the heat shrink, you know, so it's nice and even with the end of the cable. Um, and then I just have my heat gun here. And I'm going to try and arrange this like this. So I'm not putting as much heat, maybe, on the Eurojack. Uh, maybe it's better this way, I'm not sure. But anyway, we're just going to turn this on. And yeah, it doesn't take a ton of heat. I mean, I bet you could probably do this with a hair dryer if you were really, uh, you know, didn't have a heat gun. But yeah, that's the idea here. Um, I think it's a little hot to the touch, but not too bad. Hopefully the goal is not to cook the, con you know, the connector too much. But yeah, that's just going to provide you a much cleaner um, final product. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and yeah, just be aware of, um, how long you need to make each one of these. Um, in my case, it's just one U, you know, they're going to be right next to each other in the rack, this and the, my Sapphire Pro 40. Um, so they don't need to be that long, but there are some ones that are a little longer, uh, like longer, like ones that are all the way at the end of the um, Shure Auto Mixer. Um, so, yeah, just be aware of that. Um, like, this is like a longer one. But it's the same same concept, just with a different plug. Um, yeah, and this way you don't need to, you know, you don't need to buy your own cable. You don't need to buy plugs. If you just have some of these, these are just mono price patch cables. Um, that will... Uh, solve your problem and hopefully uh, you'll be able to use your Intellimix um, and it won't just be a lost piece of gear with no connectors um, yeah uh, links to the different uh, to these particular blocks are in the description and um, yeah happy auto mixing